I remember back in 2019 being overwhelmed with joy upon hearing that my team and I had won a very prestigious hackathon. These competitions really brought me a sense of excitement and the lessons I learned there were definitely immense. For me, the culture around such competition seemed very representative of the atmosphere one might find in most of the budding Silicon Valley type tech startups. Sleepless nights, cans of Red Bull sprawled across the table, one person coding the front end with another person creating multiple versions of the pitch deck whilst frantically trying to develop a USP and a business plan to hook the investors. Of course, most of the times, these hooks seem to be centered around the noble pursuit of saving the world or saving lives or saving money. Such is the culture that seems to be dominating the tech field, or at least in my experience, from observations made across TV shows, social media platforms, and from my own personal interactions. Hustling and being innovative is definitely great. But aren't we forgetting something here? What is it as people actively being part of the technology space do we consider the most important? Is it the accuracy of our model? Is it the amazing user interface that we create for the customers? Or is it about scalability and profitability? Having spent some years talking to many programmers and technology entrepreneurs, I have observed that their answers lie around the same lines that I mentioned before. To have gained a higher accuracy than a prominent benchmark from a well-known research paper is definitely great. And I'm pretty sure that in any circumstance, the person should definitely be proud and rightfully so. But what if that model was made to automatically screen resumes and shortlist candidates for the next stage in a recruitment process? Well, that must be great because now companies can significantly reduce costs and save time. Great. Why don't we put it into production then? Well, the first month seems to work fine. The second month works fine as well. But then from the third month onwards, something weird starts happening. You start receiving multiple complaints and realize that your model was indeed biased against women applicants. But how could that be? You never explicitly wrote the rules since you were using machine learning models and you used a huge data set of past data received. You were so sure that your model was great and it was getting a high accuracy, but somehow it's biased now. How could that be? In fact, a very similar situation happened a couple of years ago with a well-known retail company, and since then they've shut the model down. Now, why did this happen? This happened because the company's computer models were trained to vet applicants by observing patterns in resumes submitted over a 10-year historical time duration. And during this time, most of the technological companies had a deeply disheartening male dominance as opposed to female employees in place. I now urge you to take a pause and sink this in. It's the 21st century, and yet here we are, worse off, with not just the privileged, bigoted group of people saying no for a job to a minority woman, but machines being made to do so as well. And this isn't the first time a company has seen its tech design break. When researchers from leading technological companies taste, uh, tested machine learning features such as machine learning capabilities such as spatial recognition in 2018, the machine had significant trouble recognizing women with darker skin, a problem many still face now across platforms. And then there was the terrifying compass system, which was used to predict whether a perpetrator was likely to commit a crime again and the system predicted double the number of false positive for recidivism for African-American ethnicities than for Caucasian ethnicities. This is where intersectionality and in technology becomes so brazenly obvious. Many people take the stance that the personal is not political. But in the world we live in where everything is highly political and social, it is time we accept that most of our privileges stem from the interplay of gender, religion, class, caste, and race, which indeed directly reflects our position and power in the society we live in. 
for example take seat belts or headrests in airbags in cars most of these have been designed mainly based on data collected from car crash dummy tests using the physique of men and their seating positions women body particularly pregnant bodies don't feed into the standard measurement and as a result women are 47% more likely to be seriously injured and 17% more likely to die than a man in a similar accident which was explained by Caroline Criado Perez author of Invisible Women or let's take another example of Sasha Constanza Chok the famous author of the book Design Justice and their experience in airport security checks But the security machines are often designed for either women and men, but not for everyone else who falls outside these two binary gender classifications. Such experiences stem out of a society that has been taught to pay attention to only the majority, without seeking to include the marginalized communities out there who play an equal role in the society. The root of these problems is not just technological. in fact it is social using technology with the underlying social and political foundation often advances some of the worst possible things you can't just close your eye and eyes and say oh whatever the foundation i'm a scientist or a developer or a tech stakeholder and all i'm going to do is math code and invest without being mindful in fact i believe we need to be asking different questions should this task even exist in the first place who is allowed to create it who will deploy it on which population who owns the data and how is this data used technology has to be situated in trying to understand the social dynamics of the world because most of the radical change happens at the social level and also computer science is being taught as a siloed subject with absolutely no touch with subjects like psychology sociology justice or any other matter that significantly affects its products the need for more interdisciplinary work is now high as ever and there needs to be a rethinking of how people are taught things and who should be included in these processes we need to have principles and standards governing bodies consensual voting checks on algorithms and diversity in creating such algorithms by taking a look at the top tech companies globally we will come to understand how it's predominantly global north based in such a case how is it that we the global south citizens find ourselves represented in these technologies One of the motivations behind tech policies is to protect people from the harms of specific tech and its features. But if these policies were never written for us or have not been written yet, how are we protected in the virtual world where most of us reside? In this increasingly technology-driven world, we need to question the decision we make as technologists. I firmly believe that taking an intersectional and feministic approach to technology can ensure that our creations are just. And mind it, feminism is often construed as those catering to women, but it is a misrepresentation according to me. Feminism is about the radical reconstruction of society. Words I take inspiration from Bethna Aptika, where equity is realized and everyone's voices are heard and respected. So for me it's not as simple as creating a more diverse data set so that things are fixed. Moreover, for all of us, it should not be as simple as just doing what your manager said, reading textbooks blindly, or coding a model, not looking at the real world outcomes of your work. Becoming aware means gaining the power to create change. It is time that we all recognize, it is time we spread awareness. It is time we defy the unjust and understand that our every action matters. I remember back in two thousand nineteen being overwhelmed with joy, happy with the great and accurate model that I did that allowed me to win the hackathon. However, right now, my perspective and my role as an Indian woman in tech has become far more than just achieving that. it has become about realizing that i am indeed a very much sentient being playing a role in this intricate web of power dynamics facilitating how many live in our world while i play my role every day 
I wish to do so mindfully, empathetically and inclusively, making sure that the deserving voices are resonated louder and fighting against the invisible injustice that often murks in our lives. Moreover, my contribution to strengthening these communities will be far more outstanding than any great model or any great application that I will ever make in my life. This is why I do not want to be a great developer in the conventional sense, just objectively creating optimized programs or highly accurate models. Instead, I want to be a mindful developer. Thank you.